In this video, what I'd like to do is derive a mathematical model of this system, which is a mass spring damper system. But this time, unlike a lot of the videos I've done, I'm giving actual numbers. So I'll have a numerical sort of expression when I find x of t, which is a my position as a function of time. And what I'm really aiming to do in this video is show you what we've been building up to and how everything sort of fits together. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at my system and we're going to do a free body diagram. Then we're going to, from that free body diagram, figure out the equations of motion of the system. And from that, use Laplace transforms and inverse Laplace transforms to get X of T. So let's start by doing this free body diagram. And in this free body diagram, here's my mass. And we're going to just call this M. And we're moving down in this direction. So this is my direction of X and this is my direction of my velocity. Now, what does this mean? This means, well, when I'm moving down, I'm going to be stretching the spring right here. And my spring is going to pull back up towards its unstretched position with a magnitude of K. It's spring constant times X, the amount of distance it's been displaced. Now, C is my damper and my damper force is going to oppose my velocity. So C is going to go up and it's going to have a magnitude of C times my velocity. So now that I have done my free body diagram, I want to figure out the equation of motion. Now with the equation of motion, all I have to do is look at some of my forces in my direction, uh, so this direction, and we're gonna say down is positive, since that's my direction of motion, is going to be equal to my mass times my acceleration. Okay, so then this becomes, well, what's the sum of my, um, what's the sum of my forces? I'm just gonna write it right here. Uh, this is going to be minus kx, this, and then we're going to have minus CX dot. And this is my equation of motion without any of my numbers put in. So what I want to do is put in these different numbers that I have. So I'm going to have uh, two X double dot. And I'm actually going to bring these over to the other side of the equation. So then plus four x dot plus 20 x is equal to zero. So now this is an expression that we, very similar to expressions we saw when we were just doing Laplace transforms. And this is a second order differential equation. So there's a couple of different ways you could approach and solve this problem. I've chosen to do a Laplace transform. So the first thing I need to do is I need to use my tables and I want to use these bottom two entries. So I'm going to have two. This is a uh, second order derivative. So I'm going to have two times S squared X of S. So this is the second order table entry minus s times x of zero. Now x of zero is an initial condition and I'm giving it right here. So this is going to be s times 0 0.1. And then I'm gonna have minus x dot of zero. So another initial condition. Well, this is just zero. So this term doesn't even come into play on this equation. It's just zero. So that is this term right here. Then I'll have plus four times, I need to use this equation or this transform, S X of S minus X of zero, which is 0 0.1. And then plus 20 and the X turns into X of S is equal to zero. Now I'm just going to multiply through and I'll get 2s squared x of s minus 0.1s plus 4s x of s 
minus 0 0.4 plus 20x of s is equal to 0. What I need to do next is I need to combine all these x of s's and move everything else to the other side of the equation. So I'll have 2s squared um, plus 4s plus 20 x of s is equal to 0 0.1 s no sorry this is 0 0.2 had forgotten to multiply that 2 across so 0 0.2 s um, then plus 0 0.4 and then finally the last thing I can do is I can divide this term over. So I'll get uh, x of s, need a little bit more room. So x of s is equal to 0 0.2s plus 0 0.4 over 2s squared plus 4s plus 20. And this is what I need to take the inverse Laplace transform of. And when I'm taking the inverse Laplace transform, I've already gone through my table and found two entries that are, are going to work with this equation. So my first step is determine what's going on in this denominator. So if I do that and I say, all right, we have 2s squared plus 4s plus 20 is equal to 0. Well, let's take a 2 away. So we'll have s squared plus 2s plus 10 is equal to 0. I can see pretty quickly that if I looked at my quadratic equation under the square root, I have b squared minus 4ac. Then b squared is going to be, uh, if this is a, b, c. Uh, for my coefficients, I'll have uh, 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times 10. And this becomes a negative number. So I have, I'm have i going to have uh, complex uh, and imaginary numbers in my, in my denominator. So I've done another video on this where I explain it in probably more detail than I'm going to go into here. But what I need to do is I need to end up completing the square. So one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the one half. So I'm going to have x of s is equal to one half times the numerator 0 0.2s plus 0 0.4 divided by, well, I've taken out a one half. So it's s squared plus 2s plus 10. Okay, now we're going to complete the square. So again, it's just one half times 0 0.2s plus 0 0.4 over, well, how do we complete the square? Well, s squared stays the same plus 2s, which stays the same. And then we take whatever this variable is right here and we're going to add two over two. So uh, squared <laughs> and that just becomes one but we're essentially dividing whatever this coefficient is here by two and squaring that so we get one and I'm gonna put that in a different color and then we're going to have okay plus 10 and since we added one we need to subtract one in this we've completed the square so this is going to be equal to one half times 0 0.2s plus 0 0.4 divided by, in the last thing, we could sort of group this differently, right? This right here is nine. This right here is going to be s plus one squared. And nine can be written, if we look ahead a little bit, nine can be written as three squared. So if we do it this way, and we have s plus 1 squared plus 3 squared, well, we have 
this exact form of this table. Almost. The, no the denominator is in the exact form. Now we need to work on the numerator. And when we're working on the numerator, first thing we need to do is get rid of the coefficient in front of the S. Well, that's easy. To get rid of that coefficient in front of the S, all we're going to do is we're going to divide out a 0 0.2. So 0 0.2 really is what, one fifth. So if we divide out a one fifth, we get, okay, this is now instead of one half, this is going to be one tenth times, I'll put X of S over here, one tenth times S plus, well, if we divide 0.4 by 0.2, we're going to get two and we have our denominator, s plus 1 squared plus 3 squared. So we've taken care of the coefficient in front of the s. Now we need to make sure that this over here is just a. So how do we do that? Well, if we say, okay, this is 1 tenth times s plus 2. And then what if we say, all right, let's add 1 and then subtract 1. And my denominator does not change. So this is still s plus 1 squared plus 3 squared. And if I rearrange everything now, I am going to get, okay, this is 1 tenth times s plus one, that's good. And we have plus one over here divided by uh, my denominator, s plus one squared plus three squared. Okay, we're almost there. And now if you remember from the other video I did, now we just expand this out a little bit. So we have one tenth of s plus one over s plus one squared plus three squared and plus one over s plus one squared plus three squared. And I know I'm writing a little small, but we have a little bit more work to do. Maybe I can bring the screen down just, just a bit. Okay, so now, when we look at this, okay, this matches with this exactly. So I know that I'm going to have a term that's going to be one tenth x of t is one tenth times e to the minus a is one, so t times the cosine of three t. That's this first term right here. Now we need to deal with this term. Well, what's happening here is it's, we need to get this to be a B. How do we do that? Now, if I just look at that term, one over S plus one squared plus three squared, well, Let's multiply this by three over three. And let's not forget that we still have a one uh, tenth. So if I do that, the, we're gonna have, this three is gonna come over here. This three is gonna get multiplied by the 10. So then now this is in that form. So I can say, all right, now this is plus 1 30th e to the minus t times the sine of 3t. Let me just move it over just a little. And that becomes our answer. So hopefully this video has shown you how everything 
how the different topics we've talked about sort of can come together and we can use Laplace transforms. We can use the equations and the models that we get from our systems to get an actual solution for whatever we may be looking for.